the ancient Egyptians erected one of the greatest empires in history. Facing various adversities, they managed to maintain sovereignty over virtually the entire Nile River Valley. However, Africa, being a vast continent, harbored a variety of distinct peoples, some of whom aspired to conquer the fertile lands of Egypt. Kingdoms and tribes from Libya, Syria, and Turkey often clashed with Egypt. However, there was a people whose tenacity and courage even intimidated the powerful Egyptians, the Nubians. The Nubians, an ancient African people, inhabited the region of Nubia, present-day Sudan, for a long period, probably since 3100 before Common Era. At that time, Nubian villages already existed along the Nile River. But how was the reign of the Black Pharaohs? How did it come to an end? Before we delve into that, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and activate notifications to receive new episodes. Throughout much of their history, the Nubians did not develop a writing system, and much of what we know about them comes from records left by the Egyptians. The Nubians, inhabitants of Upper Nubia, did not develop their own writing system for reasons such as the cultural influence of Egypt, the tradition of oral communication sufficient for their needs, the lack of immediate practical needs for writing, and possible external pressures, such as invasions or conflicts. The absence of a writing system does not reflect a lack of sophistication, and many complex societies in antiquity also did not develop writing systems. The Nubian region was rich in gold, semi-precious stones, ebony, incense, and ivory. The abundance of these resources encouraged the Egyptians to invade the region in search of these valuable raw materials. The Nubians resisted Egyptian invasions as best they could, but they were militarily inferior and were gradually pushed south due to periods of instability in Egypt. However, in times of peace, the Nubians traded and shared various knowledge with the Egyptians. During the reign of Pharaoh Thutmose the Far, Nubia was part of the Egyptian Empire. However, this dominance soon crumbled, and the Nubians organized themselves into a unified kingdom, founding the city of Napata as their capital. Napata was an ancient city in Upper Nubia, in the Nubian region, present-day Sudan, associated with the worship of Amun. It was the capital of the Kingdom of Kush, which included the Kushite dynasty that ruled Egypt. The city lost political importance to Mero, to the south, but its ruins provide valuable information about the history and culture of ancient Nubia. The Nubians established the Kingdom of Kush, which would later become a respected African power. The term Kushite Kingdom originated from the Egyptians who referred to Nubia as Kush. The founder of this new kingdom was Alara, a tribal leader who ascended to the throne as king of all Nubians. Alara is recognized as the founder of the 25th dynasty of Egypt, also known as the Kushite dynasty, during the 8th century before Common Era. His successor, Kashta continued to lead the Kushites in Egypt. This Nubian origin dynasty played a significant role in the Egyptian political scene, challenging and later ruling the region for several decades. Other notable pharaohs, such as Pianki and Shabaka, followed in Alara's lineage, marking an important cultural and political influence of the Kush region on Egypt during the late period. With the establishment of the Kushite kingdom, the next focus was to ensure its defense and economy. Alara's successors effectively carried out this task, strengthening the kingdom and expanding its territories. The Kushites established trade relations with Egypt through the Nile and came into contact with the Arab kingdoms of Nabataya and Sheba. The reputation and wealth of the Kushites spread, reflected in the luxury that characterized their leaders, priests, and even their animals, such as horses adorned with gold and rubies. Over time, amid periods of instability in Egypt, the Kushites began to conquer Egyptian cities, including the glorious Thebes. At the height of their power, under the command of King Paye, the Kushites completely conquered Egypt. King Paye proclaimed himself the champion in the service of the god Amun, leading his army in a war that lasted over a year, 
defeating all Egyptian leaders who opposed him. This period of history, recognized as the Third Intermediate Period of Ancient Egypt, commenced around the year 1070 before Common Era, alternatively termed the Nubian Dynasty or the Dynasty of the Black Pharaohs. The coexistence of Egyptians and Nubians resulted in matrimonial unions among the nobility of both realms, and both cultures exerted mutual influence on religious and social aspects. Upon establishing control over Egypt, King Paye returned to the city of Napata, the capital of the Kushite kingdom, leaving his brother and successor to govern Egypt and its cities. Kushite dominion over Egypt endured until 652 before Common Era, its strength diminished primarily by Assyrian invasions that subjugated nearly the entire country. These invasions introduced heightened instability to Egyptian territories, given the formidable prowess of the Assyrians, who were militarily superior and proficient in technologies such as iron weaponry, armor, and a well-trained cavalry. The Kushite leaders were forced to retreat to the city of Napata. Sometime later, they established the city of Miro further south, which became the new capital of the Kushite kingdom. The Kushite rulers began adopting Egyptian customs, such as the construction of pyramids for their burials. During this period, the Kushites developed their own form of writing, called Meroitic script. Meroitic script is a logographic syllabic system used in the kingdom of Kush, especially during the Meroitic period. There are two main types, Meroitic hieroglyphic and Meroitic cursive. To this day, Meroitic writing remains largely undeciphered, challenging efforts to understand its exact meaning. It is found in inscriptions on monuments and tombs in the Mero region of Sudan, providing clues about Meroitic society and culture, although its precise content is still unknown. According to the Greek historian Herodotus, the Kushite kings ruled until they received orders from the priests of the Golden Temple to commit suicide and transfer power. This peculiar custom persisted until the reign of Ergamenes, a leader who, unlike his compatriots, was instructed by Greek teachers and familiar with Greek philosophy. When Ergamenes received the order to commit suicide, he reacted with anger, sending his soldiers to the temple with orders to kill the priest, thus ending this terrible practice. Women played important roles in Kushite society, with an active voice in everyday matters. On several occasions, Kushite queens ruled alone, without male interference. Kushite women were reported to fight in battles and even lead troops. The king's mother held the title of Candens, meaning queen mother, acting as an advisor to both the king and queen. In some circumstances, she engaged in political negotiations and even took complete command. In the year 24 before Common Era, the Kushites plundered Aswan, Philae, and Elephantine, returning to Kush with prisoners, valuable objects, and Roman statues, including the head of the statue of the Roman Emperor Augustus. The queen led this act as a gesture of contempt for the enemy. Upon learning of this, Emperor Augustus sent a Roman general with the mission to punish the Kushite kingdom. Details about the battle are scarce, but the Roman general reported that the Kushites had more than 30,000 warriors and fought with terrifying fury. The queen was described as a stout woman with rough manners, personally leading her troops and losing sight in one eye after being wounded by a Roman. After more than three years of fighting, the Romans finally sought a peace agreement in 20 before Common Era. A treaty was signed, in which the Roman Emperor recognized the Kushite Kingdom as an independent power, free from tribute to Rome. The Kushite Kingdom endured until 350 Common Era, but faced weakening and dispersion due to resource scarcity and lack of trade. The once rich and proud Kushite Kingdom was eventually dominated by the Aksum Empire, expanding its borders from the Ethiopian region. The Aksum Empire was an ancient civilization located in the Horn of Africa, mainly in Ethiopia and Eritrea, flourishing between the 4th and 7th centuries Common Era. Aksum was a crucial trading center, controlling routes between Africa, the Middle East, India, and the Mediterranean. 
the empire was one of the first to adopt Christianity as the official religion and developed a distinctive form of writing. Known for its obelisks, Aksum influenced culture, religion, and trade in the region. Its decline, attributed to changes in trade routes and Arab invasions, marked the end of the empire, but its legacy endured in the kingdom of Ethiopia. The Kushites were a remarkable people, known for their bravery, skills as warriors, talented artisans, and prosperous traders. Their history reflects the resilience and strength of the African people in the face of the powerful Roman Empire. By looting cities like Aswan, Philae, and Elephantine, the Kushites challenged Roman forces, demonstrating not only courage in battle, but also artistic and commercial prowess. Kushite resistance resulted in the preservation of their independence, a rich and inspiring narrative highlighting the diversity and significant achievements of the African people. This history, marked by military leadership, artistic skills, and commercial success, is a lasting legacy to be celebrated.